Good morning, everyone. Hey, fun seekers, it's your old friend, Barry Cowan, the president of the Deerfield Beach Computer Club since 2005. I'll be celebrating my 80th birthday on September 12th. And I want to wish everyone in advance a, a good Rosh Hashanah because I believe it's coming up very soon. You know, the, the high holidays for the Jewish people are coming up. Um, We'll talk more about that later and about, uh, we'll give you some tips about uh, staying safe in the heat if you happen to be in that situation. Oh, it looks like Dorothy's coming in. That's wonderful. Okay, so. All right. Uh, July, as I said, was the hottest month ever on record. Uh, the earth is starting to heat up. The, the, and that's causing a problem with the uh, ice shelf and everything all over the world. This isn't just a local problem. This is a global issue that has to be addressed eventually. Uh, the fish are dying. That's right. Well, let's pray for the people in Maui who have been uh, terribly affected by the wildfires. Also, now we're seeing it in California again coming up. And then there's Hurricane Hillary right out there uh, in the Baja going into California today. They probably can use that rain. If they get heavy rain, that's going to help a lot in order to, you know, put out some of those fires or minimize them. Um, I understand in Canada that there's this, uh, another wildfire and that uh, the smoke is an issue there, too. Uh, you don't want to breathe or inhale any of that stuff. And... Uh, that being said, I would like to uh, introduce uh, Bob Gastisha, who really needs no introduction. He's always there for me in the club. Uh, he gives excellent, unvarnished, no VS presentations, as you all know. And uh, he has a group of videos. Uh, total is 26 minutes and 43 seconds by my count. And then I will have a bunch of Apple support videos, which will be another 15 minutes and 82 seconds. And then we're going to have a special discussion on how to stay safe from the heat and other ravages of weather. Uh, we'll discuss when we're going to do the next class, which will probably be Friday, September 15th. Uh, and uh, we'll review if Apple has the event, which they will, I'm sure, before that, that Monday or Tuesday, and we'll offer you some more tips and tricks. Uh, so Bob is a retired banker, and he's uh, everywhere. You, you, can't, you can't miss him if you see all of the places he's on. He's on Tech the Senior. He's on as his own podcast. In, in short, he's an all-in-one solution. So take it away, Bob. Share your screen, and thanks for coming and being my co-host. Good morning. Uh, let's go over the videos that I'm going to be sharing today. And there are six in total. They start with ebooks are cheap, but you might pay for it in a different way. Number two, Gmail as a desktop app. Number three, Windows 11, new backup feature. Number four, don't get hooked. How to Spot Amazon Phishing Scams. Number five, Zoom Clips. Something new from Zoom. And number six, 10 inexpensive ways to breathe new life into an old PC. Now, let me share my screen. And let's get the show started. My thanks to Avast for the article on their blog which inspired this video. You'll find that article at the link listed. Everyone is looking for a deal on textbooks this back-to-school season. You know it, but so do the scammers. Here's what to look for with ebook scams. The practice of buying textbooks is practically a scam itself. Spending hundreds of dollars twice a year for books that you're not even guaranteed to use 
No wonder so many students try to find cheaper alternatives. But do you know what's worse than having to pay full price for your textbooks? Giving your credit card number to a sketchy website and getting literally scammed. Before diving down that discount textbook rabbit hole, here are some of the things you should be on the lookout for and what you can do to keep yourself and more importantly your wallet safe. Types of textbook sites. If you're on the hunt for discount books, there are a handful of different types of sites you're likely to encounter. First of, there are the big resellers like Amazon and Chegg. You're probably not likely to find any insane steals here. They might even end up costing more than your campus bookstore, but they're an all right first step. Next are the actual publishers of the books. It really depends on what type of book you're looking for, but sometimes cutting out the middleman and buying direct can be the cheapest way to go. Finally, just googling discount textbooks will give you hundreds of other less popular retailers. While the bigger sites like Amazon and Chegg can charge premium on their prices, because of their name recognition, the smaller retailers price their books far cheaper in order to remain competitive. This is where the real deals are found, but it's also where you're most likely to be scammed. For every legit site that's offering half price ebooks, there are five copycats waiting for you to input your credit card and give you nothing in return. Luckily, telling a real site from a fake site is just a matter of knowing what to look for. Spotting a scam. There are five things you're going to want to look at when it comes to spotting these scam sites. 1. The URL. Check the website's domain name and URL. Legitimate sites should have a secure connection indicated by HTTPS at the beginning of the URL. All websites with any sort of legitimacy are encrypted to protect themselves during transactions, so a URL missing the HTTPS should be a massive red flag. Also make sure that the website's name is spelled correctly in the URL. For example, if the website is named Discount Texts, but the URL is missing the S in Discount, it could be impersonating another website. 2. Website Design and Functionality Genuine textbook sites invest in a user-friendly design and interface. Look for a well-organized website with clear navigation functional search options, and professional-looking aesthetics. If you notice typos, low-quality images, or excessive ads, you might want to consider taking your business elsewhere. 3. Pricing and Payment Methods Be cautious of textbook sites that offer significantly lower prices than other reputable retailers. I know you've heard me say this before, but if the deal seems too good to be true, it probably is. Trustworthy sites also offer various payment options, like credit, debit, Amazon Pay, or PayPal. Be cautious if there's only one or two options available, especially if they're untraceable, like crypto or gift cards. Or Brand Transparency Genuine retailers will usually provide transparent contact information, like an email address, phone number, or even a physical address. Check for this information and consider reaching out to them with any questions before making a purchase. 5. The website's reputation. Sometimes quickly searching the site's name and looking for any news articles or customer complaints is enough to determine whether it's trustworthy or not. 
Just remember to be cautious of relying solely on customer reviews and ratings because a lot of fake sites are known to fabricate positive feedback. You can also use a domain checker to see how old the website is and where it's registered. If the website was created just a few weeks before the start of a new semester and is based out of some far off country, it might be smart to stay away. Power Picks If you want to save some time or just need some examples of what a legitimate website looks like, here are a few discount textbook retailers we've already checked out. Plug Books Dealing mostly in used books, textbooks, slug books is a sound choice if you're looking for physical copies. Direct Textbook Probably the most established supplier on our list. Direct Textbook has sold over 20 million books since 2002. Netbooks One of the smaller sites out there, Netbooks, always offers free shipping and has some great deals if you're willing to hunt for them. Scribed Scribed is actually a subscription-based service, letting you check out as many textbooks as you want for $8.99 a month, with the first month free. Abe Books With a massive selection and relatively competitive prices, Abe Books is your go-to if you can't find what you're looking for anywhere else. Stay safe, stay secure. Get your textbooks cheaply, but from reputable places. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye and thanks for watching and listening. Next we'll look at Gmail as a desktop app. Did you know that you can run Gmail as a desktop app? Well, sort of. Let me show you what I'm talking about. In this case, I have Edge opened and I have signed into my Gmail account. Now I'm going to go to the three dot menu in the Edge browser, select it, and then Scroll down to where it says Apps, and you'll see here it is an option to install this site as an app. And when you select it, it's going to install Gmail as a progressive web app. Select Install. Now it gives you several options. You can pin it to the taskbar. You can pin it to the Start. You can also create a desktop shortcut. And if you'd like, you can have this auto start when the system starts. I won't be checking this off because I'll only start it when I want to start it. Once you've made your selections, select allow and that's it. You have now created a progressive web app for Gmail. Let me close the actual Gmail. I don't need the browser anymore, so I'll be closing it. And you'll see that there is now an icon. It's in the overflow area because all of the space on my taskbar has been taken up. But there's now an icon for Gmail. When I select it, it opens up Gmail on the desktop. So I have app that runs on my desktop. Other way that I can access this, if not through the taskbar, you'll notice on my desktop there's also now an icon for Gmail. I can simply select it and it will open up Gmail as a progressive web app on my desktop. So if you don't want to open up your browser each time that you want to get to your Gmail, set this up and from now on access it either through the taskbar or through the shortcut on your desktop. Stay safe, stay secure. I hope that helps and makes life getting to your Gmails a bit easier. 
Bye bye and thanks for watching. Next we look at Windows 11. A new background feature. In my last tutorial on Windows 11, we talked about a new feature that will be coming out with the release of Windows 11 23H2, which will be released sometime in the fourth quarter of this year, about a feature called Windows Spotlight, which is a way for Microsoft to change the background picture on your desktop. And I had mentioned yesterday that we don't control it Microsoft does. But since yesterday, I found out something else in this new feature that will be coming in the next release of Windows 11. Let me close down the settings. To set it up, once it's released, just watch yesterday's video. But once it's been installed, as it has been on my Insider Preview build of Windows 11, you'll find an icon at the bottom right-hand corner that new icon is labeled as learn more about this picture, which is the current display on your desktop. If you right click that icon, it pops up a description about the current image displayed on your desktop. You'll also notice that there are three other images that are being displayed. And what you can do, this is the current one, the one in the upper left hand corner of this pop up that describes the scene. But you can choose any one of the others if you like them more. For instance, if I select the bottom left, it changes the display on my desktop to that picture. If I choose the top right one, there is that picture. And the last bottom right now gives me that one. So I do have some control of which images will be shown on my desktop until the next image comes along and Microsoft changes it to that next image. Some other things to point out when this is open. Not only can you change to any one of the other three images, but you can also select map it, see more photos, dramatic dams, or explore the Peak District. These searches all open up the web browser. Let me just show it to you. Map it. You can see it opens up a map and shows you where this is located. See more photos. More photos similar to the one that's currently being displayed. Dramatic dams. And the last item, explore the Peak District. From here, of course, you can also explore book flights, stays, car rental packages. So if you're really interested in the area, there's a lot of things you can do from that particular new feature. Keep that in mind. Once this is released, you might be interested. I'm happy using it right now. You now have this latest image that I selected displayed as your desktop background. And if you want to learn more about it, just do a right click on the icon that says learn more about this picture. Stay safe, stay secure. I hope that helps. Bye bye and thanks for watching. Number four, don't get hooked. Don't get hooked. How to spot Amazon phishing scams. Phishing scams are like a wolf in sheep's clothing, disguised as a trustworthy source to lure you into revealing sensitive information. How do phishing scams work on Amazon? Phishing scammers on Amazon may send you fake emails or create fake websites to steal your personal information. Always verify the sender's address and links before interacting with them. Signs of an Amazon phishing scam. Check the sender's email address for any inconsistencies. 
hover over links to see if they lead to a legitimate Amazon page. Be wary of urgent or threatening language demanding immediate action. What to do if you receive a phishing email? Don't click links or download attachments from unknown senders. Look for spelling and grammatical errors and hover over links to check the URL. How to protect yourself from phishing scams. Be wary of suspicious emails, texts, or calls asking for personal and financial information. Verify the sender's identity and check for typos or fake URLs. Here are some additional resources for staying safe online. Keep software and security systems up to date. Use strong, unique passwords for each account. Be weary of suspicious emails or messages requesting personal information. Thank you for taking the time to learn about how to protect yourself from phishing scams on Amazon. Stay safe and happy shopping! Something new in Zoom. Something new from Zoom. When you first open up the app, you'll notice all the way to the right up on top, there's something called Clips. Select it, and it opens up a new window. From here, you can create clips. And clips are just recordings. You can record yourself, you can record your screen, you can record anything displayed on the screen. What I've found out is that currently if you select the how to use clips, that doesn't work. It sends you to a website and it says you have no right to access that website. But what does work is create clips. Once you open that up, it tells you what resources you're using, the microphone, the camera, and you can select, if you have more than one camera, which camera you'd like to use. That's a different view from a different camera. And right now, 1080p, you can go down and record in 720. Let's for now leave it where it is. And up here, it shows you what is recording, and that is the screen itself everything on your screen you can of course from here when you select this you have a choice you can show the entire screen which is your background and the zoom window or in this case we can just simply say well just show me the zoom main frame window select it and then select let's see what happens if we go into a meeting i don't know whether that'll shut this off we'll find out in a second let's go home let's go start a meeting okay you cannot use a meeting and also use clips so therefore that's a no-no let's start a recording let's go back to the main thing and select the screen itself start a recording I can move this to wherever I please. I can also make it larger. That's as small as it can get, but it can get larger. And it's recording whatever is shown on your screen. If I minimize this, it's just going to show you my desktop. Since I have my icons hidden, you don't see those. But, of course, I can bring the icons back if I choose to. And this is now all being recorded. Something new from Zoom. And if you want to record your screen outside of the Zoom meeting, a little tool that's been added. I'm recording all of this using Screen Pal because the only way to record what Zoom has now made available is to use another product that's also capable of capturing whatever part of the screen I want to capture. That's just a quick look at a new feature in 
Zoom. Yes, you have to have the app installed on your system in order to use it. Stay safe, stay secure. I hope this helps. Bob, where are those recordings saved? The same as all the other Zoom recordings. Or you can designate where you want it saved. It has a default, which is, of course, under documents, and then the Zoom folder, and then the date on which it's recorded. But you can save it any place you choose. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Here comes the biggie. Yeah, 10 inexpensive ways to breathe new life into an old PC. My thanks to Jason Fitzpatrick for his excellent article and the inspiration for this video. You'll find his article at the link listed. Is upgrading your old PC or laptop worth it? If your computer feels sluggish after all these years, you'd probably like to give it a little boost. So let's look at an inexpensive way to make an old computer feel fast and fresh again. Upgrade the primary drive to an SSD. Upgrading your computer's old mechanical hard drive to a modern solid state drive is the single greatest PC performance hack around. It works for laptops and desktops alike, and everything from your boost time to your day-to-day -day experience with the computer will improve. Good news! The price of SSDs has tumbled over the years. You can pick up a decent-sized SSD from a reputable company at a dirt-cheap price. Please refer to Jason's article for price and product suggestions. Add more RAM. Upgrading to an SSD and adding more RAM to an older computer is like a one-two punch to significantly boost performance. Like SSDs, the prices are quite reasonable. If you're not shopping for the newest and most cutting-edge stuff, which, if you're upgrading an old laptop, is hardly a concern. Jumping from 8GB to 16GB of RAM is a huge performance boost for an old PC and one you can easily make for as low as $20 to $40, depending on what kind of RAM you need. Audit your startup programs and installed apps. Whether you're trying to speed up an old or a new computer, it's always wise to audit your startup programs. But it's especially wise on older computers, as there's been more time for more clutter to accumulate. If you're not actively using something as part of your day-to-day -day workflow, there's no reason to have it, or a helper app related to it load every time you start your computer. And if you're not using the application anymore, get rid of it. Uninstall it. Wipe the operating system and start fresh. Removing things from your system startup and tidying up is great, but sometimes what you really need is a fresh start, where all the years of digital debris, seen and unseen, are stripped away. Ideally, you don't want to restore from a backup or recovery disk. That will just reinstall all the bloatware you're trying to get rid of. Instead, it's best to do a fresh installation of the operating system or to use something like the Reset This PC function in Windows to wipe it back to a fresh bloatware-free installation. Consider a different operating system altogether. Windows 10 runs well on old hardware, especially with an SSD upgrade, but if you're trying to breathe life into hardware struggling with Windows, you might want to consider a different operating system altogether. There are lightweight Linux distros, like Puppy Linux, that can run on older hardware. If you're looking for more of a Chromebook-like experience that turns an old computer into a cloud terminal, you can always take Chrome OS Flex for a spin. Clean out the dust. 
Computers are good at protecting themselves from benign neglect, and one of the ways they do that is to automatically throttle performance if things get too toasty. Sometimes there are no obvious warning signs. The computer just runs slower, tasks seem to take longer, and so on. On the other extreme end of things, if you're dealing with a laptop with its tiny exhaust fans clogged with dust bunnies, the computer might outright crash because of high temperatures, but that's usually not the case. Upgrade the fans and CPU cooler. Speaking of the CPU cooler and keeping your temperatures low, if you're running a computer with the cheap stock fans that came with it and the basic CPU cooler, it's worth checking to see how much a basic upgrade would set you back. The difference between the little hockey puck cooler that came with the PC and something beefier like a tower style cooler is significant. Upgrading the ventilation and coolers on a laptop isn't really an option, but if you'd like to keep your laptop cooler to boost performance, you can always park it on a laptop cooling pad. Reapply thermal paste. If you upgrade the CPU cooler, you'll have to replace the thermal paste. But if you're not upgrading the CPU cooler, it's not something that might cross your mind. Repasting is the process of cleaning off the old thermal paste and applying new paste. It takes a little more effort than dusting out your PC, but you can get a tube of high quality thermal paste for under $10. Upgrade connectivity with USB dongles and expansion cards. Sometimes our motivation for upgrading isn't that the computer is too slow to do what we want, but that it simply lacks the necessary ports or connectivity standards we need. The same goes for things like missing Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connectivity. Let's say you'd like to use Bluetooth accessories with your old computer but it doesn't support Bluetooth, which is something I ran into. No problem. Adding Bluetooth to a PC is as simple as buying a cheap Bluetooth adapter. Replace the monitor and other peripherals. I have more than a few old laptops hanging around that from a raw processing power and performance standpoint have a lot of life left in them. But the screen quality and size, as well as the physical build of the laptop, such as cheap chiclet keyboard, generic trackpad, etc., all leave a lot to be desired. Monitors have improved substantially over the years, and it's worth swapping out that old budget monitor with a newer model or docking your laptop so you can use a proper keyboard, mouse, and monitor. Freed from that tiny keyboard and cruddy screen on your old laptop, you'll find you enjoy using it a lot more. However you approach your list of tips, though, we're sure you'll be able to squeeze a little bit more performance out of your old hardware. Maybe all your old PC needs is an SSD and some extra RAM to help you cruise along until questions like should I buy a new computer for Windows 11 or the much talked about upcoming Windows 12 are serious considerations. Stay safe, stay secure, keep that old computer humming. I'll see you again soon. Bye bye and thanks for watching and listening. Great job, Bob. Let's give him a hand. A sitting ovation. Thank you. Uh, as usual, excellent. That's why he's our security expert. You can see there, I'm sure that the Amazon issue uh, would also have something to do with other uh, similar uh, situations with different programs and whatever. Okay, Steve, you have your hand held up? No, Steve just gave me a hand. Oh, he did? Okay. Yes, he did. Oh, fingers, fingers, great. That's well, I'll, take the hand, I'll take the handle anyway. Uh, how do you um, 
figure where the videos are going to go uh, on that screen. How do you, if you want to go to documents, how would you uh, facilitate that? You can make changes to the default settings or each time you save a video, you have an option. You don't have to select the default. It comes up and by default, it installs to its default place. But you can always at that point change a different, lo uh, select a different location, maybe a desktop because it's easier to make things available on the desktop. Just don't put too many things. I've seen some desktops. There's no room for anything on a desktop because after <laughs> people finish using something like downloading a program to install, they install it, but they never take the installation file off the desktop. And pretty yeah. soon your desktop looks like who knows what and you'd like to run away from it. So if mm -hmm. you download things to the desktop because it's easy to find it there, then after you've used what you've installed, get rid of that installation file. You don't need it anymore. The program's been installed. Thank you. Bob, I you? asked you the question about um, you, what captioning program you use. I remember you told me something about it. The one that puts those captions right across your videos. What's that called? No, I, I use I use a uh, an AI program that will select backgrounds or I can choose backgrounds. Uh, and it also does the uh, captioning directly when I make up the video. Surprise it doesn't tuck you and Alice in at night. Pictory, Pictory <laughs> AI. Pictory AI is the name of the the program okay. that I use. Yeah, AI is, we're going to talk a little bit about that soon. Bob, if you want to stick around, fine. If not, if yep. you have to go, thank you very much. All right, let's see what I can do to screw up as usual. All right, here we go. Uh, I'm going to see what we got here. Hopefully you can all see that. All right. Let me get um, let me get this thing going here. Can you all see that? Okay. Yes, Barry. Good. This is my new logo here. It's technology is within your grasp. And actually, in our mission statement, we should be saying that the purpose of this club is to empower you. I come up with that word from Bard or from, uh, I'm using Bard, which is excellent. And so is uh, Chat AI and whatever else, and Chat GPT and Bing and whatever. All Everybody's got their own thing right now. Um, in fact, I depend on Bard sometimes to write things. And then uh, you have to, of course, uh, and other AI type uh, types like that, you have to check the authenticity of it especially since this is a political year, you can expect to be bombarded with things that might ostensibly look good, but they're really faked, including images and screen recordings and all kinds of things, just be on guard. Okay, technology is definitely within your grasp here. Reach out for it now. And there's that robotic arm, which we're gonna be seeing in the future a great deal. We talked about it when Don was giving his classes on assistive technology, and we showed you a video where someone actually had one arm and was using the watch to direct them. It's just amazing where technology goes. So here we go. This is today's uh, presentation. And now let's watch this first video. You may have seen it or not seen it before, but uh, it's very important, and I think it's something that's very useful because it's good for the iPhone and iPad, and reading text back to you is excellent. So let's hear it right now. With spoken content, your iPhone or iPad can read text out loud, and you can customize settings like the speaking rate, pronunciations, and more. Here's how to set it up and use it. We'll walk you through how to use speaking.
speak selection, how to use speak screen with the speech controller, and how to customize your spoken content settings. To turn on speak selection, in settings, tap accessibility, tap spoken content, and then tap to turn on speak selection. Here's how it works in action. Your device will read aloud text you select in compatible apps like Notes, Mail, Books, Safari, and more. Just select the text you want your device to read, and menu options will appear. Tap the arrow on the right until Speak appears. And then tap it to hear your selected text aloud. Ingredients. 2 tablespoons sourdough starter. 600 grams flour divided. 10 grams salt, water. Your iPhone or iPad can also speak the entire screen, and you can display the speech controller to quickly access controls like speech playback, the speaking rate, and more. To do this, tap to turn on Speak Screen in the Spoken Content settings. When it's on, you can swipe down from the top of your screen with two fingers to read, or you can ask Siri to read the screen. For quick access to the Speak Screen controls, tap Speech Controller, then turn on Show Controller. The first time the Speech Controller appears, it will be in the upper left corner. You can drag it with your finger to move it. To display the controls, tap the Controller arrow. To hear all text on the screen, tap the Play button. From Grandma, address to Magico Martinez, 714 AM, has attachment, starting with sourdough. You can also pause speak screen. I love that you're making my sourdough recipe. Skip ahead, skip backward, and change the speaking rate. The speak on touch button, which looks like a pointing finger, will let your device start speaking from a line you choose. Tap it and tap or drag anywhere on the screen to hear the text under your finger. We can't always get together and make a loaf if you want a lesson in person. You can't have too much bread in my opinion. Plus, I'd love to have a visit. You can also customize how you use spoken content in the spoken content settings. Highlight content appears after you turn on speak selection. This highlights words, sentences, or both as they're read. When you use typing feedback, your iPhone or iPad can speak each character, entire words, auto corrections, auto capitalizations, and typing predictions. Voices lets you choose different languages or accents to download. Detect languages, which is on by default, will automatically detect the language it's reading so that your device can read other compatible languages in a more natural way and you can change the default language, which adds an extra option for that language when you tap the speak button. To change the speaking rate, drag the slider, and you can tap pronunciations to customize tricky words like location names. And that's spoken content. Select, speak. Super. To learn more about accessibility features on your Apple devices, check out our accessibility playlist or click another video to keep watching. I know you found that very useful, I hope. And um, it's important because it's iPhone and iPad and it does have assistive technology in it. And uh, we'll be discussing a little bit of that and I'll give you some examples in our uh, demo later on. Let's see what I can get. Oh, by the way, before I continue, I would like to thank my friends, especially the legal department of Apple Support, who have given me permission to use their videos however I wish to use them without any copyright in, uh, infringements. These days, you have to be very careful, especially with music and things, when you put it up, because there is a bot that goes through and checks all of your videos when you're posting them officially uh, to a website for copyright infringement. And it can be quite uh, disturbing if you get one. We've had them and uh, we've defeated them. 
but that doesn't mean it still can't happen. So I want to give total attribution and thanks to Apple support personnel. Now, speaking of Apple support, we all have that on our phones, or if you haven't, you can download it, which you should from the Apple store. Let's see what it shows you. With the Apple support app, you can get help with all of your Apple products in one place or connect with an expert. Apple support is free in the App Store and it's automatically personalized for you, showing all the devices and services linked to your Apple ID. Support tools can help you with tasks like managing subscriptions, resetting your Apple ID password, and checking coverage without leaving the app. To learn about the latest features and get the most from your devices, Check out articles and videos recommended just for you. If you have questions about a device or service, Apple Support helps you find solutions. Tap a device or service and you can search for your issue or browse the support topics. For example, to learn how to update iOS, you can tap Learn More to check for an update directly in Settings, or you can read an article or watch a video. You can even get individual help from an Apple expert by tapping the message or call buttons on select topics. If you ever need a repair, Apple support helps you find the best option, whether your device is under warranty, out of warranty, or covered by Apple Care Plus. To get started, tap your device and then look for the type of repair you need. The app helps you find a Genius Bar or Apple authorized service provider near you. You can choose a provider by location or the quickest availability and then schedule and confirm your appointment. Download Apple support from the App Store today to find solutions for all your Apple products all in one place. Apple Care Plus and certain app features are not available in all countries and regions. Okay, we're getting a little bit of instability here in our area, so things might freeze temporarily. It's not you. It's coming from our area. Let's look at the next one. I hope it comes up. Yes, this is a very interesting way to limit your phone to one app with guided access. Now, listen to the term guided access. That means you're looking at an assistive type technology. You can use guided access to limit your device to a single app so you can hand it off to someone else. In this video, we'll show you how to set up guided access and then how to start a session and end a session. To get set up, start in settings and tap accessibility. Scroll down and tap guided access. Tap the switch to turn on guided access. Now tap Passcode Settings and tap Set Guided Access Passcode. Enter a passcode you can remember and then re-enter it to confirm. To start a session, triple-click the side button in the app you want to use. You'll see this setup screen the first time you use Guided Access. You can tap Options in the bottom left corner to disable different buttons and controls or set a time limit. To begin guided access, tap start in the top right corner. When you want to end your guided access session, triple click the side button again. Now enter the passcode you set earlier and tap end. And that's how to set boundaries with guided access. Okay, that's very useful. Now also, do not disturb is a very important feature of Apple that uh, I use all the time. Certainly you don't want to be disturbed all the time when you're driving or if you're uh, relaxing or whatever else. And sometimes you don't want people to bother you who you don't even know. Well, here's how to use Do Not Disturb in the control center. Let's take a look at this right now.
Do not disturb silences, notifications, alerts, calls, and messages. Here's how to turn it on or off. On your iPhone or iPad, just open Control Center. Touch and hold the Focus button, and then select Do Not Disturb from the list. Turning it on for this device will turn it on across all of your devices signed in with your Apple ID. While you're using Do Not Disturb, the icon, which looks like a crescent moon, will appear at the top of your iPhone screen in the status bar. Pro tip, you can open Control Center again and tap the Do Not Disturb icon to quickly turn it off or back on. Now you can reduce distractions on your iPhone more easily with Do Not Disturb. To learn more about your Apple devices, subscribe to the Apple Support YouTube channel. Very useful Do there. Now, this one's a little long, so I, because of time considerations, uh, I'm just going to mention it using AirDrop. If we have a little time, we could come back to it. I think maybe you'd all like to know how to do this safely. I think I'll let it go. So let's see what it says. You can quickly share stacks of photos, long videos, and even large files to nearby <laughs> Apple devices using AirDrop without using cellular data. We'll show you how to send content using AirDrop and how to change your AirDrop receiving settings. Before you start, make sure the person you are sharing with is nearby. And although you don't need a network connection, both your devices must have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth turned on. If either of you have personal hotspot on, turn it off. Ready? Let's send some photos to our friend using AirDrop. In the Library tab of Photos, tap Select in the upper right corner. Then, select the photos you want to send. Tap the Share button in the bottom left corner when you're ready, and tap AirDrop. Tap the device or contact you want to share with. If you use AirDrop to send something to one of your own devices signed in with your Apple ID, it will automatically be added without needing to be accepted. The person receiving your content will get an AirDrop alert with the option to accept or decline. They can tap accept to receive it and it will come through within the same app it was sent from. Now we'll show you how to change the AirDrop receiving settings for people you allow to view your device and send you content. Just open Control Center Touch and hold the Network Settings card, which is the group of controls in the top left, and tap AirDrop. By default, AirDrop is set to Contacts Only, which means only people you have saved as a contact can see your devices and send you content. If you tap Everyone for 10 minutes, you'll be able to accept content from people you don't have in your contacts, including people you might not know. After 10 minutes, your AirDrop settings will default to contacts only. You can also tap Receiving Off if you don't want to receive any AirDrop requests. And that's how you can share through the air using AirDrop. To learn more about how to use your iPhone, subscribe to the Apple Support YouTube channel or click another video to keep watching. Okay, a lot of us have subscriptions to Apple products. Uh, I have some, and uh, some are on trial basis, and some are uh, premium that go on and renew themselves. Uh, here's how to cancel one. Here's how to cancel a subscription or free trial from Apple or the App Store in Settings on your iPhone. Tap your name at the top of the screen, and then tap Subscriptions. A list of your active subscriptions will appear at the top.
followed by any inactive ones. When you cancel a subscription, it will be canceled on all your devices signed in with your Apple ID and for anyone connected with family sharing. When you're ready, tap the subscription you'd like to cancel. Then tap Cancel Subscription. A notification will appear letting you know the expiration date, which might be immediately or at a later date depending on the subscription. Tap Confirm to complete the cancellation. To return to your subscriptions, tap the back arrow in the upper left corner of your screen. Canceled subscriptions might still appear in your active list, but will now show an expiration date instead of a renewal date. And that's it. Cancel. Confirm. Carefree. To learn more about... Okay. Um... Let's take a look at how to take a selfie with voice control. If you use voice control, here's how to take a selfie. With voice control turned on in your accessibility settings, say, open camera. If you'd like to see the names of the buttons on the screen, you can say, show names at any time. Say, tap camera chooser to switch to your front camera. Then say, tap take picture. Tap take picture. Say cheese. Okay, I'm going to skip, I believe, the next one. Yeah, that's too much right now for time. Let's talk about tips for keeping yourself and others safe in the heat. Number one, stay informed on current weather and heat advisories. You should do that with an app, a weather app. Actually, on Apple, you have the app that's the default from the operating system weather. And then there's a weather channel app, which is free to use. There's also a premium version that gives you a little more. A time permitting, I'll show you that in a few minutes. Stay hydrated. Drink lots of water throughout the day and limit drinking caffeinated and alcoholic beverages, which completely uh, have a, te have a uh, terrible effect on the body because they will uh, create an unhealthy situation during especially a uh, hot day. Dress in lightweight, loose fitting, light color clothing. Uh, also stay indoors during the hottest parts of the day. Use home fans, take cooler showers because the body temperature needs to regulate properly. If it's always hot and you're coming in from hot, you're not really giving your body a chance to, to uh, relieve that sweat feeling that you have once you come in. Uh, wear a light colored hat. Of course, white is the best because it reflects the sun's rays the most or certainly a light color, but black is definitely a no-no. Uh, dark red, the more dark it is, uh, the more it absorbs light from the sun and heat rather than otherwise. Stay or shop in shaded or air conditioned areas or stores. So if you're out there, just go into a store and stay there for a few minutes if you're feeling weak. Uh, Walmart is air conditioned, a whole bunch of them around of us here are air conditioned, and I do spend time in there when I come out of a hot car. We're going to discuss that in a minute. If you're outdoors, apply SPF, 30 or higher sunscreen throughout the day, especially if you're in the sun on the beach. Um, also, cook with an air fryer. I don't know how many of you own one, but it's a tremendous purchase for a variety of reasons. Uh, Dorothy and I are always talking about it and uh, the, the virtues of it and, and the recipes that we've made. And most importantly, in these days, it helps you to avoid using the oven or stove to heat up the room, especially in this heat. You don't want any extra external heat and you want it confined to a great uh, inexpensive device, really, an air fryer. Use a windshield sun protector. Uh, if the sun hits your uh, dashboard or something, it can cause a great deal of havoc. It can crack. Um, it can discolor. 
It can affect the paint on your car, everything else. So use a windshield sun protector. Some are used specifically for your make or model of the car. If they do make one, check with your dealership to see if they make one uh, for your particular car. Uh, and uh, also uh, check and see if they're available in retail stores such as Walmart. But I think your best bet is first of all, call your dealer to see which ones are compatible. Check on vulnerable individuals, elderly like myself, uh, constantly in danger of having heat stroke and exhaustion. There are the uh, symptoms below. If you see someone who's dizzy, nausea, or you have these symptoms, rapid heartbeat and confusion, call 911 immediately for, for yourself or for someone else or get them into a safe environment. Uh, Maui is certainly an example of what went on, uh, getting people to a safe place uh, in the case of a wildfire. So don't let it happen to you. And with that, we go back to our meeting. Did you, did you learn something from that? Let me know. Good? Okay. These are very important tips, a variety of which um, are literally survival tips. Uh, we're facing a very uh, terrible global situation. Now, here's some latest news. Have you noticed that um, your streaming services are increasing their prices? All the streaming services, not just one, but here's five or six that are going to do so in October not only because they're facing competition and they have to pay more for what they present to you, but because uh, they are also um, Greedy. facing, yeah, that's right. So you have two choices with ads or ad free. If you get the added version, you're gonna pay more. If you get the ad free version, it's gonna be a little bit disconcerting or interrupting, but you'll pay less. For example, Netflix is going up. It was $6.99 before it's ad free for the ad version. $13.99 is ad free. It's going up to $15.49, I believe in October. Hulu, before the ads, it was $6.99. After ads, it was $7.99. The ad-free version before was $12.99, and now it's going up to $17.99. Amazon Prime Video, before, we don't have information on the before and after, but it was $12.99 with Prime. It's going up to $14.99. Disney Plus was $7.99 with ads. It's going to be $7.99 for an ad-free version, but it's going up to $13.99 in October for ad-free. Uh, Apple TV is going up from $4.99 to $6.99, and HBO Max is going up from $9.99 for the ad version to the $14.99 for the ad-free version and up to $15.99 in October. More are going to follow. And I think one of the reasons for this is something that I've seen on the air uh, quite often this morning. There was a special thing on a Today Show that mentioned it. There's a lot of uh, people in, in various cities that are playing smash and go where they uh, loot stores and uh, shoplift. <coughs> Excuse me. A lot of that is going on, retail theft, even in this by the employees. And this is causing prices to rise. And they're going to be coming to you. All these thefts are going to have the negative effect of going to the consumer, and they're adding their prices. This is also happening in supermarkets and everywhere else. I don't know if it's preventable or not. But what do you think of that, Bob? Go back to enforcing the laws like we used to, and all of that stuff will go away. Yeah, that's the problem. You can have a paper tiger, and you can have a tiger with teeth. Okay, I would like to... Santa Fe is having a big problem with that. Uh-huh. Um, the employees are being told not to do anything. I, I guess the, the stores, um, even the large 
chain stores are worried about lawsuits if the employee gets hurt or something. So they're telling employees to just let it happen. And you know, it cops, aren't allowed to, cops aren't allowed to enforce laws. Uh, and if you enforce the law, then, then you have uh, prosecutors who won't prosecute. So what do you expect? You get what you put into office. And that's what you have to remember. Plain and simple. You make your own choices. That's what elections are for. That's right. Well, you don't stop the criminals, you go out of business, and then you lose your job. That's why yep. the employees are fighting for their jobs, because the more they get looted, the more the faster the stores won't have to close. We lost Kmart in Broward County because of looting. We don't have a Kmart anymore to go to. That's right. That's an example of how it works. Speaking, right. we know Steve is right. As a retired cop, I know he, he's right. He's right. Dorothy has her hand up. Dorothy, go ahead. Uh, there's, I've been getting um, advertisements about an app that's a clean, clean out your computer. Um, I can't remember what the name of it, but is it, do you think it's legitimate? Well, C without knowing what the app is, it's hard to say. Okay. We use C Cleaner. That's pretty legitimate. Yeah. Which one? C Cleaner. C Cleaner. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And that has a free version and a premium version. But a lot of these times, people are tricked into paying for something when the free version will suffice. That includes Avast, right, Bob? Correct. Because Avast has uh, tons of ads, which I object to. And I'm sure Bob has asked them about it. Why are there so many ads on the Avast? Well, Because they're not a not-for-profit business, plain and simple. That's right. Marsha? Uh, a couple of things about the presentations. And um, what we the last thing was talking about the streaming services. Um, I've been I use Amazon Prime, but on it one of the shows I'm watching is actually through something called Freevee, F R E V E E. Yes. yes. And Freevee is a streaming service that has ads constantly. But it gets me a show for free that I wouldn't be getting otherwise. There's... I assume it's available without Amazon, but Correct. I'm not sure how to get to it without Amazon. You can get to it on the on the devices like Roku. Roku, ah, or, Roku uh, is a okay, tremendous I have device. Uh, I have if, a if it's a Chromecast device. It, it may be an app on your device, so check on it. Okay, I will. It's, Another thing get, was you can get to it, to, Marcia. You can get to it through the uh, streaming device you have. Right. I use the same one. Okay. Uh, okay. Dorothy, you have a question first. Um, no, Dorothy? I already got. I, I. Okay, Bernie. Yes, uh, on a lot of t different channels, TV. A lot of the channels are going into three, four, and five minutes of commercials. It's ridiculous That's to cut right. down on that. To cut down on that, maybe I'm wrong, but the Weather Channel comes up now with a lot of different stories and um, things about the Earth uh, from the skies all the way down from underneath the seas, and their minutes of commercials I think are about a minute and a half or two minutes. Yep. Still having commercials, you can't get away from them. But there's a lot of good information about the Earth that uh, is very, very in informal. Uh, there, informal. There, there is also a Weather Channel app. If we have time, I can look at that real quick. Um, I could show you that. Let me see. And matter of fact, uh, the actual weather app, that's the default with the Apple operating system, that when they do updates, the latest one is 16.6, .6, by the way. And we can expect more updates as um, as we go along. Marsha, do you have another question? Uh, I had two other points in reference to the things that were brought up. Mm -hmm. One was um, in terms of the background on um, Windows. You can put a background of your own on Windows, one of your own photographs, too. Uh, yes. It doesn't have to be the Windows photographs only. Yes, uh, you can I, customize. It's... Customization <laughs> is becoming a byword in everything that you're uh, installing now these days. You can yes. customize a browser. You can customize uh, in Apple everything. You can customize a, a wallpaper. 
uh, on a watch. And that's on what the I devices. Did. Yes. Right. The okay. other thing is um, the other thing in reference to something with less ads. I play. I have a solitaire app on my iPad, sure. and um, from one of the the emails I get, um, I found out that that can be without ads. If you just put it into, you put your iPad or your phone into airplane mode instead of into Wi-Fi, and then you eliminate most of the advertising. It's very useful for when you're just sitting and playing. Okay, can you all see that screen? Okay, this is my um, iPhone right here, and I wanna show you, uh, here is the weather app right here. If you open that weather, this is the default. Right now, if you click on the weather app, there it is. Now, this is just the default. You don't pay a penny for it. And it shows you what it, what is going on right there. I set it up for Margate, but you can see there may be a little bit of delay here I'm having because of uh, some, uh, oh, all right. Disturbance. Yeah, disturbance, right. There's also an app for the Weather Channel. There it is loading information. We're gonna get occasional thunderstorms to continue and there's a beautiful view of the radar. You can see it today, you can see it hourly, and you can see it daily. You just scroll down, tells you the amount of precipitation and the chance. So I do my shopping in between thunderstorms. That's about the only <laughs> way I can do it. That's, and Hillary's remnant is significant flood threat. There's a lot of video on there and it's all free. You can go premium if you want, but you don't have to do that to get all these features. Uh, normally, if you go, you might get some ads here, but they're not intrusive in my opinion, and they're excellent. So here is the weather. From the weather app, I'm having trouble with it because let's see if I can get it. Oh, uh, it's showing rain. And there's Ottawa, which is showing. Yeah, we're having trouble because of, of some of the uh, bandwidth here, but that's it's understandable. Drizzle. It's drizzling in Boca. Okay, so it should be here very soon. Let's get that out of here then. I want to stop this. Uh, just have to end stop mirroring and we go back to stop sharing. Well, I hope you've all enjoyed today's meeting. It was a very, uh, I think we had 13, 14 people. That's fine. We got Deerfield uh, Beach rain for the next hour. Yep. Yeah. And the beaches will be, you can look at the big, the beach, by the way, online. You just go to Deerfield Beach. It's actually a website where you can actually see what's happening on the beach. And you'll see, of course, the clouds and everything else. Um, there are a lot of apps out there that will allow you to do that too. It's good you to see- You can even see underwater. That's right. And there's an, there's an earth cam, which does that. There's an earth cam app, which you'll see on your Roku. You'll possibly, uh, you'll see it, I know on your Apple TV, you can get it on your, um, Amazon device, which are still available at lower prices. You know, just because we're finished with uh, Prime Day doesn't mean that Prime prices are gone. They're still ongoing. So look for the bargains. Stay happy, stay healthy. And until the next time, this is Barry saying, Look for the video probably uh, tomorrow morning. I'm going to do my best to get it up before the storms start activating and ruining the Our chances. Of... To an automatic voice message system. Okay, Ber Bernie. Three. Goodbye, Bernie. Not, Shut it off. It's not available. <laughs> Sorry about that. Thank Barry. you. Well, okay. At least you're available. Maybe it says you're not. <laughs> I've, I've, okay, had, I've had good. I've had good reception with T-Mobile 5G Wi-Fi during yes. the storms.
somebody else's background on. Okay, everybody, Hello, wave sir. goodbye. Bye-bye. See, see you in September. Bye-bye. My big birthday's coming up. Yep, it still is. Yep. <laughs>